Good morning, everyone. Welcome again. I hope you're all doing well. We have another week and we're here to continue with our series of, from the book, The Lazarus Br Blueprint, Ancient Secrets for Healing and Inner Peace. And as I said, I thought it was great um, exercise and something tools will be given to you to get through all that is going on in our world in 2020. Every week I see something on the news that something else has happened, the wildfires in California. So it's, there's two hurricanes converging in the Gulf and every time you look it's something else. So I want you to use these tools to help you to find more inner peace and healing as we go through um, this year, 2020, um, and beyond and at any time in your life. So we're going to start today with the daily word. And remember, if anyone would like to be a part of this series, service and read it like we did last, I had um, Reverend Paulette read last week, let me know. Technology is wonderful. I can get it working for us. So just let send me an email. So the daily word today, as I said, it's entitled Inner Peace. And from this, we'll lead into prayer. We affirm today, the peace of God fills my mind, my heart, and my life. The peace of God fills my mind, my heart, and my life. Quiet moments in a fragrant garden, a stroll by a lake or stream, or visit to any place of beauty inspires a deep awareness of peace. I also enjoy peace in the company of friends, those with whom I have an easy camaraderie and deep bonds. Growing in spirit, spiritual awareness, I claim inner peace wherever I am. True inner peace comes from deep within me. If I am feeling less than peaceful, I pause and breathe out worry, fear, and unhealthy concern. Giving my full attention to the divine presence within me, I breathe in a peace that soothes my emotions, calms my thoughts, and relaxes my body. As I continue to inhale peace and exhale concern, I move forward with renewed clarity and confidence. And the reading for today is taken from Isaiah 26.3. Those of steadfast mind, you keep in peace, in peace because they trust in you. So take a breath right now and open your mind up to the presence of God right here, right now, even more since reading the Daily Word. Heavenly Father, within each and every one of us, we silence our minds just for moments here to be lifted up by your power, to be more in tune with your presence. We breathe in your love, your healing power, and the spirit of just knowing that we are each and every one of us connected to that powerful, inner, peaceful power. We breathe in that knowledge and listen to the still, small voice that is calling out to each of us to just listen, to hear, to know. So we say thank you, God, for your presence as we bless doctors and nurses and healthcare workers around the world. In many places we hear the pandemic is leveling off and lessening in other places it may be rising. But we know that this too shall pass. We will get through it. As we bless all those who are helping us to heal those who are sick in the hospital and healing right now, those who are going to be there a bit longer, bless them. We hear more of people who have lingering effects of this virus. We send healing light to them and to the families of those who've lost loved ones. We bless you. We love you. And we send healing light right now. We send love and healing to all those near the wildfires in California, those that uh, healing and rebuilding from the fire and I think it was the explosion in Beirut and those who are preparing for storms in the Gulf of Mexico 
and the storms that took place in the rest of the world. And every time you look, it seems to be something else. But we know God is in the midst of this, working with us, healing with us, and bringing about a great change to bring a better place for each and every one of us. And we know it doesn't feel like it and look like it right now, but God is working with us. I know that to be true. Believe that and have faith with the power of God, the love of God that is unconditional, that is healing us right now through this pandemic and any violence. And we bless those who are still marching the march of Black Lives Matter and, and for the lives that need healing, for change to take place, not just in America, but all over the world to bring about universal love and healing. So in the name and in the power of the Christ present with each and every one of us, I send peace out into the world and know that God is within the midst of it and that our lives are healed right now. And we send healing love and peace and joy and the knowing with the faith that all is well right now. Amen. Ah, so we're going to begin with a song before we go into the talk entitled Remove the Stone, the second part of the Lazarus Blueprint story that we're working with. And we've heard this song and I love it. It's called I'm Saying Yes to Life. I'm Saying Yes to Life. Yes, 
Wow, I love that song. And it ties in truly with this um, topic of removing the stone, the part of the Lazarus story. Remember last week I read from John 11, 1 to 25, and the story of Lazarus. And I'll read it today. And But one part we're going to read again as we tie it into this talk. And it says, Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Mary. Sorry. The village of Mary and her sister Martha. A lot of M's. So the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord in whom you love is ill. So Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After hearing, having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days long in a place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and, Joseph and Mary to console them about their brother. And this is the part you're going to listen to again because I'm going to repeat it. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was laying across it. And Jesus says, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. That's where I'm going to stop today. And if you want, you can read the rest of it. But that's the key part of today's talk. Remember, this book is about the ancient secrets hidden in plain sight. As, as metaphysicians in unity, we look at the Bible stories and we bring them up into today's world. And we find the story within the story. And this story is a blueprint for overcoming difficult situations and healing even a situation that seems impossible. And I'm using the pandemic for us right now. For each of us, we have to find what that situation is because it's always more than what is right in front of our face right now. Something that could have happened many years ago. And the two main characters in this story are Lazarus and Jesus. However, Lazarus represents a part of your life that needs to be stored or healed the part of your life that's feeling pain right now and wants this pandemic to go away but jesus represents your highest nature the real you the light of you that knows that this too shall pass that we will get through it and has faith to overcome anything that's the real you so the book as i said last week has six steps that come alive as we find your story within that story. And you will find the key that accesses you to help you overcome what needs to be healed in your life outside the pandemic and every anything else that is going on. And we always say the first basic step is to meditate. You don't have to go on a mountain or do anything. Just stop for a moment, find a quiet place to breathe in and out. And find your center, that presence of God within you that will guide you to the place to find the blockage in your life. Remember last week we talked about turning away. That was the first step. And in the story, Jesus took two days before he went to Bethany. And he was only a couple miles away. He was in Judea. And, and many of us would have said, why didn't he go away? Go there right away. He knew his friend was sick and dying and didn't he hear Martha and, and Mary talking. But Jesus knew he had to take the time to stay in the present moment, finish what he was doing in, in Judea and find that space in himself to block out fear, to move, get away from the negative whirlpool of emotions that was surrounding what was happening in Bethany. And to do that, he had to take those two days. And for us, we say, meditate, take the time to center yourself, to reveal a way to get from the impossibilities to the possibilities. 
take that time. And that's what the turning away was about, taking those two days for each of us. Whatever it takes, take that time. And in that time, you have that sudden knowing that we can trust and we know what to do next. But when you rush into two situations like we and humans do all the time, it becomes worse than it was. And when our emotions get more and more flustered and painful and it's hard to move away the stone, which is where we are today in this next step. Remember, Jesus in this part of the story asked to be taken there and he said to Mary and, and the people who surrounded him, remove the stone and yes, stench will come forth. And of course, there are a lot of people standing around watching this situation going, what's up with him? The man's already dead. You know what we're like as humans. Really? We're going to remove this stone and now it's going to smell around here? Because we're in that point of it's already too late. You should have come early. The should have, the could have, the if onlys. Don't we all do that? If only. We play the blame game. Mary and Martha and all those people were blaming Jesus for not coming sooner. Don't we all? Here's the pandemic. It's around us. If only the president, if only the premier, if only the officials had done this, if only the other countries had done this first, we wouldn't be in the state we are now. If only, if only, if only. Many of us are still in that playing game. If only I didn't go visit my friends when they told me I shouldn't have. And now we're sick. That's the blame game. I don't want you to play, play that game. Remember the part of you that is the highest part of you. The Christ nature. Let's look to that part. The, the Christ nature within you. That's the real you. The blame game is a Lazarus part that needs healing. The real part of you has the wisdom to know the difference. And when Jesus got there, remember he was calm and confident. He wasn't buying into all the negative what ifs and could ifs. He said, take away the stone. He was ready to roll up his sleeves and do whatever action needed to take place. The boulder is huge. You know, in those days when it was a cave, they had to be a huge, hard boulder. And for many of us, our boulders are huge. The blockages in our way of happiness are huge. And this pandemic has just added to it. And it's now is the time to take the second step. To face whatever needs to be faced, to stand strong in it, to we want to remove that boulder. We want to find that place of healing, of love, and of peace, that inner peace that we talked about in, in the daily word. We want to be like Jesus without a trace of hesitation or doubt. He responded with a simple and direct command, take away the stone. That's what we need to do to remove that stone. So each of us, I want you all get a piece of paper if you don't have a piece of paper and write, start writing the things that are blocking your path to healing. What are the boulders in your way? The pandemic is just the latest trigger. It could have been something from a long time ago that started as pebbles. You were mad at your mom because you wanted to go to a different school. Or something happened to you, drastically in your family. You could have lost a family member that was very important to you and pivotal in your life. I think of Oprah and Winfrey's story of being raped as a child. And those were big boulders back then that built up and created. And look where she is right now because she took the time to remove the boulders. And that's what we're doing today. So find a piece of paper while I'm talking and start writing down things that you think might be boulders, pebbles, stones. There could be a lot of them. It could be one big one that started it and then you piled on others. to be. They blocked out it, that cave. That big dark cave where Lazarus is. 
The key here is to identify what your stone is and what does it represent in your life. It is a roadblock to your happiness. It could be a very strong belief or an attitude or habit with his chock, with his, which is choking away your life for it and preventing you from becoming the complete person you are meant to be. Yes, you could have lost your job and that started a whirlpool of all sorts of emotion and many of us are going through a lot more than we normally would because on top of this is a pandemic out there. Remember, the journey to wholeness requires a clear road a mindset that help us to remove it. So take the time to identify your obstacle. In, the, in this story, it's the boulder. And it's all those law onlookers that are standing there with Martha and Mary who are doubters. They are like those friends who are going to say to you, you know, I don't know if you can find another job. It's going to be a long time before this pandemic over. So, you know, you're just going to have to deal with it. And sometimes we just have to. But we need to find that place of inner peace within that knowledge to move to the next place. Could be the better job, the one you really wanted. It could be the healing that you need to get through the death of somebody in your family during this pandemic. Or if cancel or anything that's happened. What is that boulder? We need to roll away that stone. And it's sometimes hard work. And it's hard work also to keep it in place. Because with that boulder, there's resentment and anger and unforgiveness and, and a whole lot of stuff that's going on and boiling up inside us. And in this time, we also have to choose our friends carefully. And our family members and those around us that are keeping us stuck in that cave. Remember, Lazarus was in that cave for four days. And for many of us, we haven't been in the cave since teenagers and, or a time before that. Or it could have been just now because things could have been going along and we were working through things. And this pandemic and threw a wrench in it. But Lazarus was in that tomb for four days. Remember, we're looking at the story within the story. And it represents a, a time of long-standing problems that keep us in darkness. And in that cave, and in, behind that boulder, we're in a dark place. And we're now asking you to find a place or a solution that represents the Christ in you to bring you forth outside of that cave from the hopelessness that is Lazarus lying in the tomb to the wonderful life that you can have by remembering your real true self. Identify the impediments that are blocking you. Meditate, like I said, that's the beginning part. Find out what is the resentment, the anger, the shame, the guilt, the blame that is keeping you in that cave, in that bark, dark place. Remember, it's not just this pandemic. It's so much more that is keeping you angry. For many people who are marching for Black Lives Matter, it's because it's the buildup of things that have been happening, as we say, for 400 years that haven't been healed. And it's time to heal it. We're rolling away the stone, chipping away that stone piece by piece. And it is time to claim and, and say powerfully with confidence, remove the stone. And find forgiveness in the midst of it. Because the key for most of this is unforgiveness. It's usually the most obvious one that holds us back. For those who want to keep people in their place and like the way it was, even though it hurt other people. Open yourselves up to give yourself for what it is. You see here many people say, I didn't know. And now there's a whole lot of other stuff that's coming up and then forgiveness takes place. This is a great time to bring forth a place of forgiveness to heal the unforgiven and to roll away the stone. 
push away the stone of unforgiveness. This opening of the cave is both an entrance and an exit, is a letting go and a letting God. So welcome the light that comes forth from the darkness. Now some of us may want to stay in that dark cave for a while. They feel justified in, in their passionate anger and their unforgiveness and they're willing to pay that price of staying in that cave. And each of us has a choice of what we want to do. But remember, hanging on to that is self-destructive. It eats away at our souls and hurts us in different ways. Do we want to have a life a life sentence with no parole of staying in the darkness? Or do we want to roll away the stone into forgiveness? So this step right now, I want you with confidence to roll away the stone. Find forgiveness in your soul. Forgive all that has been going on. Because one of the tools we use is isometric forgiveness. It's like pushing at a car that you know you can't move with your body strength, but you're building muscles in the process. And every time you build up those muscles and you forgive each step, each pebble that you put in front of that cave and that blockage in front of you, you're building up the stone so that now you stand strong and say, remove that stone because you have the strength and the inner power and the fortitude and the Christ presence within you that's strong and powerful to help you to move forward and you have forgiveness muscles that are strong with his isometric forgiveness tool. So today, remember, you turned away and you took the time in meditation and you meditated again and you used your forgiveness muscle and you moved away that stone and you stand strong and you've and now removed this. The, as you've moved that stone, the stench is coming out and now you're letting the fresh air come in with that unshakable trust in the Christ presence within you. The great stone has been pulled away. And the opening of the cave is there. And it's now time to step into a new way of living. The roadblock is out of the way. So next week, we're going to talk about the great expectations. You've turned away. You have removed the stone. And it's not going to happen sometimes in a moment, in a day, in a breath. Take your time. These are the steps that you will do over and over until you remove and you find what that stone is. So we're going to take time right now to meditate for a few moments to think about what it is you need to do to find your way to removing the stone. So breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Open your mind and your heart to discover the stone that is blocking your path. Allow inner wisdom to be revealed in the perfect way and the perfect time. Breathe in and out and know that all is well. In this time of meditation, let's say a few statements of truth. I am worthy of love, respect, and happiness. I am worthy of love, respect, and happiness. Breathe. Past memories cannot hurt me. Breathe. 
I forgive myself. I forgive myself for hating all those years or resentment for un or unforgiving forgiveness all these years. I forgive myself. So take a deep breath in and out as you remove the stone and the blockages right here, right now. As we open our eyes, we affirm my prayers are called to life and healing that bless my heart. My prayers are called to life and healing that bless my heart. So everyone, thanks for being here. I bless you. I love you. I appreciate you. And I hope behold the Christ in you. Until next time, namaste. Let the light of God surround you right now. Amen.